Hey folks, let's discuss aspects today and let's look at Mars square Neptune. So the thing with aspects is that you have a few things. You have the archetypal relationship, yes. And in this instant, it would be the archetypal relationship between Aries and Pisces. Uh, Mars governs Aries and Neptune governs Pisces. So uh, in the zodiac, uh, Aries and Pisces are, of course, right next to each other, and signs that are next to each other have very different agendas and also very different ways of doing things, and in that sense, they do have uh, that kind of tension. We have the archetypal relationship, yes? And then we have the actual relationship. So in this instance, we're discussing Mars square Neptune and the actual um, relationship in question is the square. Of course, the square adds on another layer of, of tension and conflict. It adds that on to the underlying archetypal relationship between Mars and Neptune. Yes? So the fact, though, is that whenever planets are in a relationship by aspect, it means that they are forced to work together. So Mars square Neptune means that Mars has to incorporate Neptunian energy into how it goes about achieving its goals and fulfilling uh, its desires. It has to do that. It has no choice but to learn to work with Neptune. And in this case, in the square example, what's happening is that Mars and Neptune symbolizing these dimensions of the psyche, they have to find a way of uh, becoming stronger through their association. So even though the square means that Mars and Neptune are kind of resisting each other, it means that they have the opportunity, the evolutionary imperative of the square is that they get to work together and they get to become stronger through their association. So each planet is going to sort of spur the other one on to becoming a greater version of itself by learning to work with each other. But Mars has to uh, incorporate Neptunian energy into how it achieves its goals. So inherently, aspects represent three things. They represent beliefs, beliefs within the psyche, yes. They represent patterns of personal experience and also the pathway to resolve negative beliefs that the aspect itself represents. Let me say it again. Aspects are beliefs, but they also point to the pathway of the resolution of whatever belief that is, if it's negative. And squares often do represent uh, beliefs that are not integrated and conflict between the dimensions of psyche that the planets represent, and they, by virtue of their relationship, they are having, they generate, let's say, a belief that is negative. Squares often have that, that the, the, the planets in question, which represent dimensions of the psyche, the way that they're talking to each other uh, generates this negative or, let's say, limiting or inhibiting belief. So if aspects are beliefs and patterns of personal experience, what might Mars square Neptune be saying to itself? What might a person with Mars and Neptune square uh, be sort of saying? What would their narrative and belief system be? For example, uh, the person might say, well, my capacity for action, the way that I can direct my energy toward my goals, that's Mars, is thwarted and frustrated, that's square, by loss and confusion and uncertainty, that's Neptune. The person might say, I have no purpose. I can't get anything done. Whenever I try to do anything, that's Mars. Forces beyond my control, that's Neptune. Undermine Neptune, my conscious goals and aims, that's Mars. So that would be a mixture of the personal experiences as well as the beliefs that the person may have with Mars screwing up with Neptune. That Those two parts of the psyche are not... Uh, talking to each other very well. They kind of resist each other and they result in a, a set of, of emergent beliefs. So Mars square Neptune is the problem, but it's also the resolution. 
meaning that inherent in the aspect is the pathway for its resolution, for the problem to be resolved. Yes, so it means that in the square aspect that uh, Neptunian energy needs to be meaningfully and constructively incorporated into how it is that the person is going to now pursue and act on their goals, that's Mars. And that is the medicine. So we said in the beginning that by virtue of Mars and Neptune being in aspect, Mars must, it has to, learn to incorporate Neptune into its activities. So this aspect links Mars and Neptune together in that kind of way. They have to just learn how to become friends of sorts. Yes. So the medicine um, of Mars square Neptune would be something like this. Letting inspirations and imaginations positively propel action. So Mars would stimulate Neptune to constructively harness and direct its imagination and inspiration to act and, and harness it in a, in a defined direction. And Neptune now gives Mars a vision to work with. Yes. So each planet in the relationship in the square works toward bringing out the best in each other, but they have to learn to work together. They must work together and they must work toward this integration. So if you have Mars square Neptune, perhaps you can relate to that narrative. So a Mars square Neptune belief could be, I am victimized by circumstances outside of my control whenever I try to accomplish anything. So you know what? I'm going to just sit home. I'm going to do nothing. I'll just sit home and do nothing. So the interesting thing is that with aspects, it's this, it's this kind of vicious cycle in a sense that the aspect itself represents the internal beliefs but because they're the internal template because the aspect is the internal template you the person now begins to have the experience outside of himself yes so the person is genuinely saying that look i have been victimized by you know all of these forces beyond my control but that is sort of the outer or let's say exteriorized um manifestation of a psychic structure so it's interesting but the thing is that too folks that we can't we don't know by just seeing the chart if the person is on the more integrated end of the mars neptune uh, spectrum or if they're still really just polarized by um, a negative belief so we just don't know that by looking at the chart alone so I hope that this has given you a useful framework to look at aspects, you know, to check to see, first of all, what is the archetypal relationship? Then see what is the actual relationship uh, in the actual birth chart itself, your birth chart? Is it square opposition? What is it? Then look at what beliefs and experiences I do I have that support this configuration? Then you can think about what do the planets suggest about how I can resolve uh, limiting belief systems. I have lots of other astro content on the channel which may help you out so definitely go and check those videos out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time talk soon. Bye!